what kind of shows do you like watching as a kid? Like, who were your favorite cartoon characters? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I'm a big fan of Tweety Bud. Ooh, I taught I taught GMA Panoi TV. Yeah, uh, I'm a huge Looney Tunes fan. If if it wasn't already clear, uh, I grew up watching the Bugs Bunny and Tweety Show, which were the reruns of the original shorts that were done in the golden era of animation uh, around 1940 onward, 50s, 60s. Uh, you know, Chuck Jones, Bob Clampett, Mel Blanc, those were like the original people that were making Looney Tunes. The classics. And yeah, as a kid growing up in the in the early 80s and the 90s, I was exposed to the Looney Tunes on Saturday mornings. Looney Tunes aside, I liked uh, Batman, the animated series, you know, Super Friends, Hanna-Barbera, Yogi Bear, Flintstones, Jetsons. And uh, even like the you more- You watched a lot of cartoons. <laughs> I'm like a, I'm a, a human encyclopedia of cartoons. I know everything about those 80s cartoons, like Transformers, G.I. Joe, I, Ninja Turtles. I used to watch them all, but now I get to work on a lot of these shows, which for me as a kid is, is amazing. What was the process like in trying to make it in this industry, in the voiceover industry? Like, is it harder for Asians to get a break? What I kind of noticed and came to realize about voiceover, it's it's not about this. It's not about how you look. It's about how you sound. And if you're able to convey those feelings and emotions, if you can act, that's the most important part of voiceover. Even if you're doing Bugs Bunny, you have to be able to convince the audience, Doc, that you are a rabbit just trying to eat carrots. I wonder what lumpia tastes like. You know, I, I also I, I want to make Warner Brothers animate him with lumpia now instead of a carrot. But um, it's all about the good acting because if you're a bad actor or actress, you could hear it, and as an audience, you know, everyone has something to say about a performance, and if it doesn't hold ground even in cartoons, then then your career, you know, will be very quick and very short. However, if you practice and uh, keep at it and never give up, then uh, you will slowly start to build your career. You will slowly start to get experience. Because even trained actors come into the sound booth and there's no camera, right? So they have to get used to that. I don't think some, some people I've seen get it right away. And there are other people that are still thinking about this, right? About their face and about how to move. But it's just seriously just about this. It's about your relationship to the microphone and your relationship with the script. How did you feel like when you found out you were going to be in the Space Jam sequel with LeBron James? Like what was the experience like meeting him and recording with him? I started out again recording temporary dialogue for that movie. They always said, this is just temporary, so just just so you know. So not to get my hopes up or not to, you know, think that I was already there. But while you're in that position, you have to imagine, I have to give it not just 100%. And if you're in the same room with LeBron, a world, you know, he's world LeBron. Class, he's LeBron James. You have to be a champion. You have to perform like these characters, like it's it's this is the final cut, you know? <laughs> So that's how I felt when I was in the room working with LeBron. I was performing like this was it, like it was the final cut. And I think that's what led me to uh, being in the movie. Stronger Together, the GMA Pinoy TV podcast season two. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the GMA Pinoy TV Facebook page.